The Imperial Chamber is satisfied that, with respect to the application of the standard, the trial chamber adopted the proper standard of proof beyond reasonable doubt in its consideration of the evidence. The Imperial Chamber, therefore, dismisses March's third ground of appeal in its entirety. In his uh, fourth ground of appeal, Martic alleges that the trial chamber erred in law by failing to properly elaborate on the elements of the law of joint criminal enterprise. The appeal chamber finds that the trial chamber correctly stated the law applicable to joint criminal enterprise and duly described the requirements for a conviction pursuant to that mode of liability. The appeal chamber, therefore, dismisses March's foreground of appeal in its entirety. In its fifth ground of appeal, March alleges error of fact in the trial chamber's findings relating to the general requirements of Article 3 and 5 of the statute, the existence of the joint criminal enterprise, his participation in the joint criminal enterprise, and the crimes committed in furtherance of the common criminal purpose of the joint criminal enterprise. In addition, Martich also argues, under various grounds of appeal, that the trial chamber erred in failing to properly establish a link between himself and the principal perpetrators of the crimes. <clears throat> in challenging the trial chamber's findings, that the general requirements of Article 3 and 5 of the statute had been established, Martic argues that the trial chamber erred in finding that a state of armed conflict existed in the relevant territories of Croatia and the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina during the indictment period, and that the crimes charged were committed in the context of that armed conflict. Further, Martic challenges the finding that there was a widespread and systematic attack against the Croat and non-Serb civilian population in those territories during the same period. The appeal chamber finds that Martic merely suggests a different interpretation of the facts to that of the trial chamber and failed to show that the trial chamber erred in its findings. Accordingly, the appeal chamber dismisses this subground of appeals. With regard to March's challenges to the trial chamber's finding on the clashes in and around the village of Kijevo on 26 August 91 and the Kijevo ultimatum, the appeal chamber finds that Marches has not shown that no reasonable trial of fact could have reached that conclusion beyond reasonable doubt. It therefore dismisses the subgrounds. Martic argues that the trial chamber erred in not making findings on the background and political objectives of the Serb leadership. He argues that had the trial chamber taken into account the preceding historical context, it would have understood that Martic advocated for an independent Serb state or at least a substantial degree of autonomy within Croatia as a response to the aims of the Croatian authorities. To the extent that March's argument is an attempt to plead that the acts for which he was found responsible should not be considered criminal because they were a response to crimes committed against him in 12 and 13 insofar as they relate to these crimes. I had at this point that Judge Chombo repents a separate opinion on the matter of joint criminal enterprise. Coming to the sixth ground of appeal, Martic submits that the trial chamber erred in setting out the mental element of ordering a crime under Article 7.1 of the statute in holding that indirect intent was sufficient for ordering. The appeal chamber finds no error in the approach taken by the trial chamber and dismisses Martic's sixth ground of appeal. 
in his uh, seventh ground of appeal, Matic claims that the trial chamber erred when it found that he ordered the shelling of Zagreb on 2 and 3 May 1995. The appeal chamber finds that Matic has not shown that the trial chamber erred when it found that Matic himself admitted to ordering the shelling of Zagreb. And that circumstantial evidence also supported the finding that he did, in fact, issue an order. Consequently, the trial chamber's conclusion, in light of the totality of the evidence, that it was proven beyond reasonable doubt that March, Martich ordered the shelling, stands. The appeal chamber dismisses March's seventh ground of appeal. In its eighth ground of appeal, Martich argues that the shelling of Zagreb constituted a lawful reprisal. He contends that the trial chamber failed to consider the unlawful purpose and effects of Operation Flash, launched by crowd forces, in breach of a ceasefire agreement. He argues that in doing so, the trial chamber disregarded relevant evidence. In the alternative, he argues that the shelling of Zagreb was a lawful military action undertaken in self-defense. After reviewing the evidence, the appeal chamber finds that March has not demonstrated that the trial chamber erred when it found that the M87 Orkan, as used in the circumstances of the case, was an, in, an indiscriminate weapon, incapable of hitting specific targets. Furthermore, the appeal chamber is satisfied that a reasonable trial chamber could have concluded beyond reasonable doubt that March knew of the effects of the M87 Orkan when he ordered the shelling of Zagreb. This subground of appeal is accordingly dismissed. As for March's alternative argument that the shelling of Zagreb was a lawful military action conducted in self-defense, since Martich has failed to show any error in the trial chamber's conclusion that he deliberately targeted the civilian population of Zagreb, this submission must fail. In light of the fact that the prohibition against attacking civilians is absolute, the appeal chamber fails to see how Martich's arguments that the Serbs were not aggressors, but rather were defending themselves could justify Martic's action in relation to the shelling of Zagreb. For these reasons, and on the basis of the full reasoning in the judgment, the appeal chamber dismisses Martic's eighth ground of appeal. In its sole ground of appeal, the prosecution submits that the trial chamber erred in finding that people or the combat could not be victims of crimes against humanity. In support of this, the prosecution argues that the definition of civilians, when used in the context of crimes against humanity, should not be limited to its definition under international humanitarian law, but could also include other categories of people. While the appeal chamber considers that certain terms have been defined differently in international humanitarian law and international criminal law, the fundamental character of the notion of civilian in international humanitarian law and international criminal law weighs against giving them different definitions under Article 3 and Article 5 of the statute. The Peel Chamber therefore finds that the definition of civilian contained in Article 50 of Additional Protocol 1 reflects the definition of civilian for the purposes of Article 5 of the statute and does not include people or the combat. That said, the Appeal Chamber notes that the relevance of the civilian population in Article 5 of the statute is to the chapeau requirement that there be a widespread or systematic attack against the civilian population. 
There is nothing in the text of Article 5 of the statute of previous authorities of the appeal chamber that requires individual victims of crimes against humanity to be civilians. A person hors de combat may thus be the victim of an act amounting to a crime against humanity, provided that all the other necessary conditions are met, including that the crimes occur as part of a widespread or systematic attack against the civilian population. The Appeals Chamber finds that the Trial Chamber erred in law in this respect, and had it not done so, it would have entered the convictions under Article 5 for murder, Count 3, torture, Count 6, inhuman acts, Count 7, and persecution, Count 1, for acts committed against victims who were hors de combat at the time of the commission of the offense. The Appeal Chamber finds that all elements of these offenses have been met in relation to these victims and enters conviction for these crimes with the exception of the conviction for crimes committed in Benkovac, which the Appeal Chamber reversed. Turning to sentencing, <clears throat> in his ninth ground of appeal, Martis contends that the trial chamber erred when it held that Article 24 of the statute and Rule 101 of the rules, which contain general factors that the trial chamber is to take into account when determining sentences, do not impose binding obligations. He further challenges the comparison of this case to that of Babbage in the determination of his sentence. The appeals chamber rejects these alleged errors. In his tenth ground of appeal, 